आवाज जाएगी ओके okay. ठीक है ठीक मैडम ने नहीं अभी नहीं मैडम ने Good morning, one and all, joining this webinar on waste management during COVID-19 pandemic. On behalf of the organizing committee, Jibaji University, I feel privileged to welcome you all. I extend a warm welcome to the chairperson of this webinar, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Sangeeta Shukla, Professor Anand Mishra, Rastar Jibaji University, the chief guest for this webinar, Professor Sudhir Meshram from Nagpur University. experts professor bs tomar from brc mumbai professor dd agrawal from jivaji university professor nand gopal sahu from kumai university nandital professor jyotsna meshram from atm university nagpur dr amit bansiwal from niri nagpur dr ds bag from dms rd kanpur dr uma pathak from drd gwalior faculty members participants from various institutions and media personnel joining this webinar we all know that today is 5th june it is the world environment day we also know that the virus covid 19 is life threatening to humans however the environment has become more clean and green due to the lockdown period pollution has decreased to large extent and it is our duty to maintain this natural balance and uh, let us take the opportunity to serve and protect our environment and mother earth this webinar will cover deliverables from the experts on how waste can be managed and the environment can be served there will be eight speakers in this webinar joining us who will know each other and they will throw light on biomedical waste plastic waste electronic waste solid waste covid 19 waste etc first i invite the chief guest of this webinar professor sudhir meshram who was also former vice chancellor north maharashtra university and was founder director of rajiv gandhi biotechnology center and also ex professor and head pg department of microbiology rtm university nagpur ex honorary colonel commandant of national cadet corps to deliver lecture on bioterrorism and covid 19 so please welcome professor sudhir meshra meshram sir ko माइक्रोफोन ऑफ है म्यूट करके रखा है हेलो हाँ 
Hello, no, it's fine. Is it fine? Are you able to listen to me? All of you? Hello? Yes, Hello? we can listen to you now. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, good morning to uh, all of you. Uh, well, my dear colleagues and participants, uh, uh, we are under entirely different uh, situation where uh, this particular uh, conference is being organized. So anyway, uh, uh, this particular crisis or situation uh, somehow reminds me uh, what had the, we had taken the decision earlier in uh, 1991 and then um, uh, in 2014 onwards regarding the LPG, that is the liberalization, privatization, globalization, which had uh, resulted into uh, actually polarization of class and capital. The In this COVID-19 crisis, the I find the same situation which has resulted into polarization of uh, human uh, manpower resources in respect of their earnings. So now it is our duty by uh, being a researchers or the educationists uh, who are involved in the uh, planning and management uh, uh, to suggest and to come over uh, the situation. Uh, so that uh, the worldwide uh, it will be acknowledged. So in fact, particularly when we look at, at the, this one, the, when we talk about the waste management uh, during the crisis of COVID-19, of course, it is very difficult uh, to see or uh, to involve in waste management, particularly in COVID-19 crisis. Uh, because of the lockdown and other things. But anyway, we can uh, propose and we can um, short, on, short out some of the, this one, the uh, comprehensive strategies, uh, long term and short terms uh, in, uh, on variegated, uh, this one, the aspects. And for that, uh, our universities, the colleges, the institutions, the research institutions, they can play a very important role uh, to uh, bring some of the creativity from our, uh, this one, the student community. During such a um, uh, crisis, we had to uh, give them some kind of uh, academy of uh, stimulus packages so that their creativity can be enhanced. Uh, because for every management, the creativity plays a very important role. This creativity among the students, because the students, uh, when we see that the, they are in fact the passive learner. So that's why they, uh, they are able to contribute much more into the knowledge sector. And when we talk about their creativity, their creativity can lead to the various ideas which can be turned into the capital zone, which ultimately leads to the innovations. And by means of innovations, they can go for the IPR and then the some various kind of patents can be um, piled. Uh, so during all these um, things, uh, we have to also um, consider well, what are the challenges, what are the various challenges and constraints uh, we'll be facing uh, uh, before the, uh, this one in the 21st century. Because in view of the present crisis, now it is certain that the 21st century demands a venture-based economy and education. The 21st, as I said, that the 21st century demands the venture-based economy and education. There are two kinds of um, um, economics uh, fundamentals. One, one is the virtual economy and the second one is venture 
economy. Venture economy for the countries like us is very important. We have it's the participation is more from all the communities where we can share common share is very important in these ones so through the venture based economy and education we can uh, create the lot of self help groups and we can create and we can get with a lot of entrepreneurs also for that being of this one the academicians our uh, this one role is very important because this uh, 21st century demands the sunrise knowledge the sunrise technology the sunrise modern economy so we have to think about the tomorrow's modern economies especially uh, the um, post covid 19 and that comes to us and we have to forget about the sunset knowledge now the time has come where we have to leave the sunset knowledge we have to leave the sunset technology of course some basic uh, things are uh, required which help us to form the uh, modern technology or modern term, um, this one the tools but one has to think about how uh, we can just um go ahead uh with the 21st century because ultimately the 21st century demands the intellectual capital and for that we have to create the intellectual capital so for that we have to go further this one the sunrise knowledge and sunrise tools and technology and economy as per the need base the region wise the country wise and ultimately for the entire world community and uh, to share the common uh, knowledge of the common this one the um, economy this particular covid 19 has also taught us one thing to all of us that is the fundamentals of rising the demand for state socialisms so how this state socialism can be formed or can be helpful during the uh, covid 19 crisis or after the uh, this one the post covid 19 crisis so this state uh, socialism can be inherited from the individuals individuals plus socialisms which ultimately can be converted into the lifestyle we have we can say the associate life in hindi it can be said the sahyogi samaj agar individuals or socialisms ka agar hum uska combination karte hain aane wale din jitne bhi rahenge challenging usko face karna hai तो हमें सहयोगी समाज का निर्माण करना बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि ये कोविड नाइन्टीन ऐसा नहीं है कि भाई मेरा घर सुरक्षित है ये कभी भी दीवार फाम के अपने घर में घुस सकता है इट इज इनविजिबल ऑर्गेनिजम लुक एट एट दिस वन दल इंस्टांसेस वी कैन साइट दर्लियर ऑल्सो इट्स अ काइंड ऑफ दिस वन वेल दैट इज नॉट एट कम unless the who or the pentagon or the world community um, from uh, the developed countries and developing countries they are representative they study that how this particular um, covid has uh, come and uh, it has spread uh, worldwide but overall the theory suggests that it's a kind of the bioterrorism so this one the form earlier also we have seen the bioterrorism what is bioterrorism bioterrorism it's a um, uh, attack on um, on us which uh, which is completely invisible and for that the uh, enemy is invisible so how they create the, these bioterrorisms 
so these bioterrorisms that has come into the existence by forming or by inventing the biological warfare agents or the chemical warfare agents here the your chemistry also plays very important roles as most of the times if you see the most of the uh, pesticides they are being derived from the polychlorinated compounds which are uh, which persists into after its use which persists into the soil for uh, years together because they cannot be uh, they are they are the organisms can, are not able to degrade them so these polychlorinated compounds they uh, their residual impact remains years together because they are inherited from the particular compounds uh, known to be structures recalcitrant they are re in uh, recalcitrant natures which are um, which are highly impossible for the um, uh, biodegradation so we have to go for alternative uh, this on the measures and particular uh, in this crisis we can think about those particular uh, this one the crisis uh, as today's we are um, celebrating the environmental uh, this one day also aaj jagtik paryavaran din karke hum sab jane usko celebrate kar rahe hain mana rahe hain so we have to uh, that this particular on this occasion and considering the this one the seminar topics uh, the best management during the crisis we have to think about what are the environmental friendly concept which we can place before the world communities our especially our students community the young researchers they can involved in futures like the use of uh, supra molecules uh, which uh, they can form or in short it is um, can it is known as self assemble process the second one um the very important this one uh, from environment point that is the bio use of or application of biopolymers that is the smart um, polymers in short it is known as smart polymers then the the third one that um, can be used or that can be designated as a shape shape memory polymers that is known to be smart materials the use of smart materials and then the next one that is the use of bioplastic uh, plastics and then the last one um, i would like to suggest um, that is the green polymers the use or application of green polymers so these are the uh, various uh, environmental friendly concept that can be incorporated very well um and um, i'm considering the this ones as uh, we so uh, we are talking about the earlier as i said that the recalcitrant compounds they are very harmful um, to the biospheric entire biospheric life the example why i am telling you all this uh, bio friendly that this one the concepts on the friendly which can be explored more or their daily use because what are the earlier happens uh, the classic examples of the some of the this work during the biological warfare agents or chemical warfare agents uh, known to be bioterrorisms uh, if i can cite the examples that uh, during the this one the vietnam war uh, uh the usa has used uh the mixture of uh two herbicides that is the 24d and 245t these two herbicides were used during the um, vietnam war uh, by the usa because the vietnam uh, is a uh, thickly populated or densely populated with the trees so it was very difficult to penetrate inside the enemy's territories so they used thousands and thousand tons of this mixture of herbicides 
which are highly which were highly recalcitrant in nature and before using whenever they use the, any kind of this one during the biological war agents or chemical war agents or in nuclear war they use sort of um, codes so during vietnam and usa wars by dropping these uh, particular um, herbicide mixtures uh, the agent orange known to be mixture of herbicides which contains the dioxin as contaminant this agent orange was used and since from that day after its use still the vietnam is suffering even today also still the entire the um, biospheric life in vietnam the soil agriculture land the um, water reservoirs the entire environment uh, is highly polluted uh, with the research that the still the newly born babies um, the newly um, babies are born with lot of deformed deformities so this is because of the these contaminants they have used as a dioxins and this um, mixture of herbicides they cannot be uh, degraded easily so these are the some of the examples these are all the mankinds whatever today we are facing uh, it is all the uh, created by the ma mankind it is we are responsible for creating the entire chaos and entire crisis worldwide uh, because this covid 19 it doesn't require the passport or any kind of visas uh, because we have initiated the um, uh, lpg as i told you liberalization privatization globalization so this uh, covid doesn't require any passport or this one because we um, um, involved more on the this one the world trade so through the this one the transportation the world wise this particular covid 19 now it has spread more than 180 countries so it is the man man made crisis which we have created so we have to think before the application of any invented technology we have to see what could be the consequences of our own act these are the our own acts the consequences are before us which we are facing what kind of this one are we able to um suggest any things or what we are going to leave for our future generations we have to think about that one also so look at at the this one also so some of the examples so also i can just quote because this biological warfare agents or chemical warfare agents they are being maintained very secretly in usa p4 laboratory that is governed by the pentagon you will find the um, the p4 laboratory uh, or in national institute of virology in uh, this one the in china which is located in wuhan or bsl four laboratory that is biosafety um uh, laboratory which is um, in wuhan as we know that that uh, has a organism has come from that originated from that particular laboratory so these are the laboratories where the stock of the very dreaded kind of disease producing organisms are being maintained particularly in this particular lab very dreaded kind the yellow fever the encephalitis the hiv so the um, kind of the this one the organism coming from dengue uh, these are all the this one the um, very dreaded organisms or the pathogens the human pathogens are being maintained over there uh, in the form of biological or this one um, biological warfare agents though um, they had a convention in 1971 russia and usa um, not to use um they had commitment not to use the biological um warfare agents but still during uh, this one the um iraq and gulf war the um, iraq has used the, this one um iraq has added um the biological warfare agents they had used the mycotoxins and 
when they had added this mycotoxins with the mustard sulfur gas with the mixture of the mustard sulfur gas they had used the coat that time yellow rain so this particular yellow rain the coat which had they had used during the war against the enemy's territory it is nothing but it is the mixture of mycotoxin isolated uh, four mycotoxin isolated from the fusarium species plus they had used the uh, sulfur mustard gas um, that has to be treated ethylene with the sulfur chlorides so this particular was added in um, cell bomb uh, um, into the uh, enemy territories and who's uh, the this one the soldier who had come into the context of this elorin on uh, this one the mustard sulfur gas it has a very uh, curious impact on their nerve cells the nerve cells particularly on acs enzymes that is known to be acetyl cholinesterase enzymes this acs enzyme is very important for all of us that's why we are able to recognize or identify the things but who was the soldier they had come across to this particular elorin uh, this one the biological and chemical warfare agents the soldiers were they were the blank and um, they could not remember even um, um, uh, they lost their memory and then uh, this was the impact on the this one uh, the human being surrounded to that particular area then again scientists they went and then the, some of the atropine injectors which is known to be antidote for the uh, for coming over to this uh, crisis um, especially the antidote for nerve gas, gas was invented especially by one of the scientists again the scientists they involved and then they come out with the antidote particularly uh, one of the scientists who worked uh, in the usa his name was francis so um, francis he invented the uh, specially he isolated the enzymes and uh, he manipulated that um, enzymes genetically by means of genetic engineering which was responsible for detoxifying the organophosphate nerve gas so this particular enzymes is known to be uh, genetically modified diisopropyl phosphochlorodes enzymes so they were prepared in tablet forms and then they were distributed um uh, among the soldier in order to protect from this ones so these after the use of this biological warfare agents or chemical warfare agents it persists into that particular territory or in that particular locality and the humans the humanity the humans the childs and this one generation to generation they are suffering this is the impact of the this one on the biological warfare agents the similar kind of the this one the problems which are facing so now the questions are before us what could be the um, this one the um, condition um, in post covid 19 down um, um, this one particular phase so we have to think about what could be the as the consequences of our own act considering the future of cities in the post covid 19 world then we have to think about the economic viability of the post covid 19 term world we have to also think about the future of travel in post covid 19 world we have to think about the future of education we have to think about the behavior of the community particularly in the post covid 19 world we have to also consider how the pand um, this pandemic impacting the economy the world economy especially the in developing countries like us what could be the uh, uh, future for the status of our indian economy um, during the post covid 19 what could be the this one the what is the future of psychological impact on um, um, the entire world community especially on the uh, children and the students what could be the future of our technology what could be the future of our daily life 
in post covid 19 world then how will be able to support the students community uh, during this covid 19 uh, crisis so the biggest worry is what i find during the this one particularly in the this one the crisis of the covid 19 is the healthcare and education now the time has come where we have to contribute or we have to um, incur more from our gdp right now whatever the contribution we are taking from the gdp is very less it is totally it is not adequate so we have to um, see that the contribution of our gdp for these two sectors is more we have done that um, coming to the this ones the the tomorrow's technologies in view of the crisis and particularly the waste management we have to think about the this one um the um uh, toilets what could be the condition of our um, this one the tomorrow's toilets we have to innovate um some of the uh, this one the toilets which will be dry flush toilets which has to be sewerless toilets we have to think about and introduce the neuro marketing intelligentsia and information technology we have to introduce these particular subjects in our this one considering the today's and tomorrow's crisis we have to introduce such kind of this one technology and subjects so that what could be the status of the neuro marketing intelligentsia and information because if i give some of the examples in view of this crisis particularly the waste management the bioplastics as i have told you earlier the environmental uh, and the uh, some of the concepts examples bioplastics and biodegradable solvents these are the very good examples uh, so for the green economy uh, is considered we have this particular green economy can be used in very great industries uh, uh really such as cosmetic or pharmaceutical uh, uh, products some of the bioplastics uh, made from the specially from the polylactic acid that is in short it is known as pla um they are very good um, um, uh, we can use this bioplastic um plant based especially plant based bioplastic made from the pla uh, the example can be um, i can cite some of the disposable cups the packaging materials and uh, some of the children toys also we can make because these particular um, plant based bioplastics they are not recalcitrant in, uh, in nature they can be easily degradable they will not persist in soils in our ecosystems years together so we have to think about the use of these bioplastics uh, or the biodegradable solvents uh, so then uh, some of the recent um, uh, have come across to some of the recent uh, news also some of the australian scientists they are working uh, they have some of the uh, for construction materials in real estate business the bricks are being made are uh, from the recycled plastics and organic waste this is very important innovation in a uh, real estate uh, this one uh, sector uh, there because the construction materials they pull well, they emit lot of pollution as we are using the cement and other this one they are highly but this one um, the recalcitrant in nature so Uh, the application of these um, recycled plastics and organic waste, um, as these uh, Australian scientists they have discovered, especially they have these uh, scientists they have discovered the new kinds of rubber poly polymers. These rubber polymers they made it from the sulphur and canola oil. Uh, especially for, for coating the construction from the construction materials these are the very important uh, innovation in the 19 
and further they have also claimed that these rubber particles can be used for auto purification and uh, of the uh, rubber pipes tubings and even they can be used for the rubber mat also so these are the very important uh, innovation um that is being um made during the crisis of um, pandemic covid 19s so in the meanwhile so uh, uh, the ai is also playing the important role that is artificial intelligence but now we have to compare who will be the this one uh the forthcoming in the 21st century whether ai or the hr the human intelligence or the artificial intelligence in my view i find that the ai is sort of is a visual visual blower so i am asking the question to all of you that is ai is visual blower for creating the jobless society we have to think in that direction also that's why i said that we have to give the sunrise knowledge sunrise tools sunrise technology to our um, uh, students community we have to encounter it in uh, our syllabus so we have to forget um, the sunset knowledge which we are continue giving to the um, this one the student community so the time has come we have to think about such type of visual blowers so for that we have to think about how the hr can involved in the green economy or green technology so that the present crisis or whatever we have will be this one i know that some of the experts they will be contributing a lot in today's conference and whatever are the emanating recommendation uh, coming from these uh, discussions uh, during such crisis will be very much uh, or immensely it can be helpful for um, forming the comprehensive strategy in the future as a short form as a short terms and the long terms so i wish um, all the best to all of you and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to present my views before us thank you very much thank you sir for such an informative lecture on bioterrorism and how plastic waste and organic materials can be recycled for betterment use and supporting the green greener aspect of environment and green economy so we have to think in future about these policies to government level also now thank you very much sir okay thank you to all of you uh, since there are many participants so discussion won't be possible so we can get, share your email and uh, whatsapp number yeah. so they can uh, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah what is the this one the questions are there you can send me through the this one we can discuss through the email definitely sir thank you very much thank you so much please don't Good morning, sir. Morning. Outstanding.